Hello everybody, how we doing? I hope everybody's having a great day. But uh just wanted to cover a few things on the uh the PX7 uh and also that would also cover the Graco GX7A model. Uh this is going to be primarily focused toward those that are into the concrete lifting with these pour guns. So again, PMC PX7 and then we also it also covers the same for the Graco GX7A series uh, gun. Uh, so proper way on removing the chamber or module, whichever pre uh, preferred word that you use, uh, is to take our safety stop button on the back of the gun. We want to put it to the spray position because I want full uh, full rearward travel of the valving rod. Uh, so I'm just going to depress the trigger. So I have the gun connected to air, depress the trigger, and then we're going to remove our chamber or module retaining nut. That's what I call it. Um, and we're going to remove it and then we're going to lay it right off to the side. And then when I release my trigger, my valving rod is going to push all the way forward. Thus, my chamber or module, again, whichever word that you want to call it, comes all the way out of the fluid housing. And then we'll just simply slip that off of the valving rod and we will service it. Uh, and when we look at this, if we look at the typical spray chambers, um, this one here is different as it has the front purge rod seal. Let me take something so I can point. We have the front purge rod seal is actually made or molded onto uh, the chamber itself. So this is all one, one piece. Where that if we was doing spray operations, then we would have two pieces here. We would have the chamber, and then we would have the front purge rod seal. So with this being one piece now, uh, it has uh, happened several times I've done a few tech calls related uh, to this issue of the users installing the chamber or module into the fluid housing backwards. Uh, and to the beginner, you might think that the small end or the skinny end would go into the fluid housing first and then the large end or the fat end would uh, be what your chamber uh, retaining nut would then seal to and uh, that is wrong. Uh, this skinny end should be sticking out or protruding out of the front area of the uh, the fluid housing so that it connects and seals up to this retaining nut like so. So one of the problems is you can depress the trigger and you can install this chamber or module into the fluid housing backwards. And you can get this on to the uh, fluid housing and get it sealed up. What happens though, when the user does put the chamber in backwards uh, and you pressurize the unit, when you pull the trigger, you'll only get one chemical out of the gun as one of the impingement ports will be uh, sealed off by installing it, installing it in backwards. So we want to make sure that we install the chamber into the gun like so. We want to take our gun, we want to press the trigger, so we have full rearward movement, movement of the valving rod, insert the fat end into the fluid housing. We'll take our retaining nut and then we're going to thread it on like so, maintaining the trigger pull and then we'll tighten the retaining nut down. And then we can release the trigger and then we'll finish up tightening up, snugging it up. And now this gun here is now ready for doing concrete lifting. Hope that's answered some questions. 
Hope that's uh, been hel a helpful tip to those of you out there. Then, of course, when we go to put the gun back onto our hoses, make sure that you engage your safety on your gun. You've got to practice safe workmanship. So, y'all have a great day, everyone, and we'll hope to see y'all around soon. Bye-bye now.